Hello aspirants, looking at current affairs for 16th November. The news items for today from the Hindu are these seven. The first one, Supreme Court refuses to stay demonetization notification. So petition had been filed before the Supreme Court against the demonetization notification of the government. That is 500,000 rupee notes are no longer legal tender. So the Supreme Court has presently refused to put a stay. It has accepted the petition, but it has refused to put a stay on this order, notification of the government. So means denotification can continue. If a stay is put, that means that the Supreme Court does not allow the government to bring this order into effect. Means demonetization would be stalled. And until and unless the judiciary adjudicates on the matter, so the stay will continue till the judiciary decides on the matter, whether it is constitutional, legal or illegal. So if it is constitutional and legally allowed, then it would be implemented when the ju judgment finally comes. And if it is illegal, then it is null and void. So this stay is one idea which the judiciary generally uses. But in present case, it has refused to put a stay. The judiciary says that it does not want to interfere with the government's economic policy. So this is one point of significance. This we'll point out even in a question bank question. So do remember. Then the another point which has been put up before by the Supreme Court is that it wants the government to take immediate measures to alleviate the hardships and sufferings of the common men who are standing in long queues for hours. So it has also asked the government to file an affidavit before it that what initiatives measures have been taken by them to alleviate these hardships of the people. The advocate for the petitioners is Mr. Kapil Sibal and he is putting forth a question that how can the bank put a limit on withdrawals? That is the banks are the trustee of the people's money. So if people want to withdraw their own money, how can the banks put a limit? But of course there is a loophole here because the money which you deposited was old currency and what you want to withdraw will be new currency. So that is fine. The another point which is highlighted which we already know is that 86% of the money in, in circulation presently is in form of 500,000 rupee notes which have presently been denotified. So demonetized. So that is important because in 1978 when the last demonetization drive took place in India, the currency notes, the higher order currency notes which were demonetized were only 2% of the entire circulation in the economy. So only the richest of the rich had those currency notes generally. So that is another aspect. So this present initiative is resulting in uh, innumerable hardships for the common men. So that is true. So we'll have to wait and watch how does this exercise go ahead. Then the next news item is Russia, Pakistan and China forum clouds Afghan donor meet. So we are presently seeing that Pakistan and Russia are coming close. So we have had two aspects on which we conclude this because first one is there was sale of helicopters to Pakistan, military helicopters to Pakistan by Russia. So this was protested against by India as the relations are altering. Then another one was about the military exercise. Russia and Pakistan conducted a joint military exercise just days after the UI terror attacks took place. So this was also protested against by India. This was in October 2016. So this was another, another thing. Now what is happening is Russia is asking Pakistan and China to come to Moscow and there will be a consultation, joint consultation amongst these three countries on the ground laying work for regional projects in Afghanistan. So on the Afghanistan issue that Afghanistan, Afghan war has ended. So now there is a need for redevelopment of Afghanistan for bringing in peace. So this has been taken over by the neighboring countries too. So there is a uh, Heart of Asia. It's a 13 member Heart of Asia donor conference. So with the support of USA, this grouping of 13 regional nations has been set up. USA is not a member of this, but it supports this. So this grouping discusses annually meetings are held and discussions on Afghan peace process and redevelopment takes place because th these are regional issues about counter-terrorism, about uh, drug trafficking, all these are issues which all the countries neighboring Afghanistan also face. So this is an initiative already in place and this meeting in 2016, in December 2016, 3-4, it will take place in India. So already when this meeting is scheduled to be taking place in India in Amritsar, 
why does Russia presently, why has it announced that there will be a trilateral meeting of only Russia, Pakistan and China. In this, it has already named India and Iran as regional stakeholders, but it has not made these two countries, India and Iran, as part of the consultations, which will take place in December in Moscow. So this is there. So this 13 nation heart of Asia grouping, you can look at the members too. These are the members here. This is Afghanistan, neighbor of Pakistan. So Pakistan lies here, Afghan, Pakistan, India. Then you have Russia, Saudi Arabia, Russia and all these countries, former Soviet Union countries like Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, Azerbaijan. These are all former Soviet Union countries. China is a member and then Iran is here and Saudi Arabia, UAE and Turkey. So these are the 13 nations comprising heart of Asia grouping on that have annual conferences in 2015 the conference was held in pakistan at that time india's foreign minister sushma swaraj had also visited pakistan and it, they had started uh, talked about resuming india pakistan comprehensive dialogue but then in jan 2016 pathan court attacks took place and the entire bilateral relations got derailed so this is there then even with Russia, we have also spoken with Russia at the BRICS summit about its relation. It says these are one of instances that uh, the helicopter sale which took place is only one time. We do not have other plans, future plans to have sales, military sales to Pakistan. But then presently also again we are seeing how Pakistan is included and India is excluded in this forum meet. Then the next news item is... So this is about heart of Asia, Istanbul process only as we discussed, encouraging security, political, economic cooperation among Afghanistan and its neighbors. So it was started in 2011 because they face common threats as we said, counter-terrorism, counter-narcotics, poverty, extremism. So US and over 20 other nations and organizations serve as supporting nations. They are not part of this 13 member grouping. The next news item is U.S. could join China's Belt and Road Initiative. So this is One Belt, One Road, which China has initiated. It comprises of two parts. One is New Silk Road Economic Belt and another is New Maritime Silk Road. So it is an economic trade related initiative for encouraging trade that is through infrastructure development. This is reviving the old Silk Road which passed through China. So this New Silk Road Economic Belt as you see, moves through China, Asian countries going up to Turkey, entering into Europe, also reaching Russia and Venice, Italy. So in Europe as well. So this is the planned new Silk Road economic belt. And another part of Obor, one belt, one road is maritime Silk Road. So this is the new maritime Silk Road, which again starts from China, goes through Southeast Asian countries and reaching up to Africa and Europe as well. So these two initiatives have been launched by China and it is investing heavily in these and to bring out funding for these infrastructure projects, a part of Europe, it has planned to establish AIIB, Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. So this is a bank initiated by China. It has come into effect in December 2015 after the requisite number of members gave its approval. So it has 57 founding members. Even Canada became a part of AIIB in September 2016 now. So USA has refused to be a part of AIIB. So presently the news is that with Donald Trump becoming the president of USA, there are chances that even USA would join this bank. So Barack Obama had refused. So they say this is an error and USA should also become. So these are the viewpoints coming from the experts who are part of the team of Donald Trump now. Because this is an infrastructure invest investment project. So why should it not be encouraged? So here you see Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank too about the project. It was planned in 2013 by Chinese President Xi Jinping. Then in 2014, it got people MOU signed with countries so for founding become founding members eventually 57 founding members founded this bank then this United Kingdom became the first country from G7 nations to be part of the bank so many countries have joined the bank so this in June 2015 article of association was finalized and eventually when requisite number of uh, articles were finally signed by the 
founding members it came into effect the shareholders the largest shareholders in this aiib are china india and russia with maximum stake with china it has 30.34% stake so that is the amount which china has invested in this bank india's is 8.52% russia 6.6% so this is their stake in the bank other countries have then uh, stakes as well so this would de decide would decide how much would be the power voting rights which they have in the bank as well so even this bank has been established as opposed to other banks which are there there is already an asian development bank then you have world bank and imf which are uh, dominated by usa and europe respectively international monetary fund the bretton woods twins so this is an asian bank now established the countries which have refused to be part of aiib you can see here are usa japan south korea and this is colombia in south america so they have refused but now the news is that after the president elect been donald trump now it is expected that the usa may also join asian infrastructure investment bank aiib the 57 founding members are shown here you can see that is a huge lot then the next news item is center increases msp for rabi crops so what is msp msp stands for minimum support price that is the price at which government will purchase crops from farmers so this is declared by the government before the sowing season so presently it's the winter season the rabi season rabi crops would be sown so just before the sowing starts the government declares the msp so farmers can make an informed choice about what rates would they get for their crops and accordingly decide which crop to sow so these rabi crops are wheat the pulses and oil seeds are also sown in this season so these crops msps have been increased by the government and and a bonus has also been given for decided to be given for pulses and oil seeds in addition to the increase in msp so this is determined by the government on the recommendation of the cacp commission on agricultural costs and prices so it gives its recommendation the final decision is taken by the cabinet here it is the cabinet committee of economic affairs headed by prime minister narendra modi which has taken this decision to increase msp now then the next news item is low inflation fuels rate cuts hopes so inflation is presently running low so in october data too it is seen that food prices are low and they have resulted in retail inflation as well as wholesale inflation indices slowing down so this is expected again going further down because of even the demonetization drive so if inflation rates are going down a rate cut is hoped so inflation basically means what general and sustained increase in overall prices of goods and services in an economy so when prices are decreasing then it is lower inflation and prices are increasing inflation is going high so basically the if the inflation is slowing down the government would go ahead the rbi would cut the policy rate basically what is spoken of here is the repo rate so repo rate is the rate at which rbi provides loans to banks so if the rate at which rbi provides loans is cut is lowered then it will be easier for banks to get money from the rbi so that would result in them also decreasing their interest rates and they being able to provide more loans in the economy and that is how it would flourish it will help in easier loans and business which would get more money into their uh, you know investments for their businesses and this would result in a spur in the economy so this is what is expected about inflation inflation is determined in india through two indices wholesale price index and there are different types of cpi consumer price indices so the determine the inflation rate and index is used so there will be a basket of variables based on how their values change the inflation is determined so there will always be a base year so compared to the base year how the rates have changed will be decided in the inflation index rate the wholesale price index would reflect the average prices of goods in the wholesale market so this is published and monitored by the office of economic advisor of ministry of commerce and industry and this is done on a monitoring and updation is done on a weekly basis the base year for wpi is 2045 for cpi consumer price index there is a list of different types of cpi indices so the four 
which were there originally are CPI for industrial workers, CPI for agricultural laborers, CPI for rural laborers, and CB for CPI for urban non-manual employees. But presently, UNME, the CPI has been uh, suspended. It is no longer used and it is replaced by three others. These are CPI urban, CPI rural, and CPI combined. So the labor-related price indices, these three CPIs, for workers, this is computed by Ministry of Labor. So, Department of Labor undertakes their publishing. The other CPIs, urban, rural and combined, these are calculated and published by CSO, Central Statistical Office. So, this is there. Then the uh, Urjit Patel Committee, which had recommended that RBI should look into inflation. For that, the target inflation targeting would be done through looking at, at the uh, inflation rate as per CPI combined. So this is this rate is important. Then next, looking at the commodities, the share of commodities in these indices in CPI, forty-five point eight six percent share weightage is for food and beverages. So that is how it is expected that consumers spend the most on food and beverages than other commodities. You can see for wholesale price index, the maximum share is with weightage is for manufactured products, then fuel and power, and then other primary articles. So these will be used by the manufacturing sector, uh, the wholesale market sector as such. Then this is about the retail inflation to going low presently in October 2016. That is shown. The next news item is center mulch changes to BPO scheme on tepid response. So under the Digital India program, the government has initiated this scheme called India BPO promotion scheme. It was launched in April 2016 to promote BPOs, business process outsourcing units. So these with what we generally know as call centers. So these BPOs are generally concentrated in major cities, the metro cities. So encouraging them in towns, smaller towns in the country to encourage employment in these regions too. The government came up with this scheme. But then it is seen that the response has been low. The reasons for this which has come out is that the BPOs which had already been established in smaller towns were not given any incentive incentive for increasing, expanding, nothing. Plus also the incentive which will be provided then it requires that the once the incentive has been given the center should become operational within a period of three months. So that was a precondition put in. So the BPO sector has given forth its views. So now the government will modify changes based on the responses to make this more appealing and having results. So what the government does is that it provides 1 lakh per seat to a BPO which is established. So this is the program. Then the next news item is swimmers attempt 7 hour crawl across shrink shrinking Dead Sea. So environmental degradation is affecting the Dead Sea also. So to promote awareness on this, this seven hour crawling has been attempted by swimmers in the Dead Sea. Where is the Dead Sea? You can see here. This is the map. Dead Sea. It is shared between these two countries. This is Israel and Jordan. So it this Israel in Israel, this is the Palestinian region. You should be knowing West Bank and Gaza Strip. So the Dead Sea is having very high salinity. So the salinity levels are so high that a person who tries to swim in the Dead Sea would actually float. So that is there. Plus it is called a Dead Sea because due to high salinity, no flora, fauna flourish in this sea. So that is why it is called a Dead Sea. So this is there. Its salinity is said to be 9.6 times higher than ocean salinity. So that is how it is. Also the lake is rich in minerals. The salts are minerals. So these mineral resources have also been exploited to a huge extent that has resulted in environmental degradation taking place in this region too. So that is the awareness drive which is presently going on. And also the depth of this Dead Sea is 1388 feet below sea level. So that is the lowest place on the land part of the earth as such. Then the saltiest, the hypersaline lake Dead Sea is, but it is not having the highest salinity. The highest salinity record is with Don Juan Pond. So this is a hypersaline lake in Antarctica. So its salinity level is 40%. So this is known as the saltiest known body on the earth. So these are the news items for today. You can download the PDF from the website too. Thank you so much.